Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and today I've got the pleasure of speaking with Jen Rosenbaum, who's a photographer based in New York. Her specialty, boudoir, and she has made a name for herself all around the world now, and people know about her, uh, seek her out, and definitely want her to speak about the topic. She's going to be speaking, actually, uh, with uh, Shoot.Edit on April 29th, and the topic is the art of posing women. Now, whether you're a woman or a guy who's with the camera, listen, we all have to photograph women and we all struggle with it. But Jen's got it down pat, you know. Uh, if you look at her work, you know she's got everything down to, uh, to a science. So we're going to talk a little bit about how she's got to where she has and, and really figure out you know, what she may be discussing at this webinar coming up on April 29th. Thanks for joining us, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. You know, uh, one of the things that, as even as I said, as I hinted at, as a guy, uh, I I shoot a lot of business portraits, and when women come in, the first thing out of their mouths is like, "I don't want to have my picture taken." <laughs> don't make me look fat. <laughs> don't look, me, yeah. Don't let make me look fat. Uh, I, you know, my left eye, left eye is droopy. My right eye is better. <laughs> All these things, right? So straight off, off the bat, I just wanted to know what is your best technique for putting people at ease. Yeah, I think it's trust and it might be a little bit harder for you in a business situation where you don't meet somebody beforehand, right. but with boudoir, I really try to have some communication beforehand with my clients so that they trust me. Sure. Um, I mean, chances are if they hire you, they trust you to begin with. So when a client comes in and says, oh, my left side is better than my right side, or you can't shoot me at that angle, or you know, my left eye is droopy or whatever, what I like to tell them is these are probably lies that they've told themselves throughout all these years and they believe it because they've told themselves that so many times. Trust me, let me see what my camera sees and I promise I won't make you look bad. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes the right side is better or their left eye is droopy or whatever it might be. But it's good to hear those things instead of just dismissing them because now you know what they're looking for in their images. So, you know, when they come in and they see the pictures and they go, oh, see, I told you my left eye is droopy. If you made her a left eye look droopy, that's bad. <laughs> you know, you have to like make up for that. So it's important to listen, yes. but not buy into it necessarily. Indeed. There are times though when I remember one client um, you know, enjoyed the the experience of being photographed, but ended up not buying anything afterwards because she felt like I don't know something something happened between the time and I guess she was photographed and and she looked at the pictures. She was like, oh, I don't like them anymore. So uh, are those are those situations also based on the idea that you haven't really talked to them or figured out exactly what they're looking for? Um, it's hard to say on any specific. Um example but listen let's be honest women are our own worst critics okay I deal with the two I struggle with body issues I hate the way I look in photos I don't think I'm photogenic I am just like every other woman so I understand it mm -hmm. um, it happens sometimes sometimes people just can't get out of their own head and they don't like what they see and there are always those special cases but 99% of the time you're not gonna have that right. you know we have to know that we can't you know, I call myself a photographer therapist, but I'm really not a therapist. I just do the most therapy that I can with my camera and with my personality and with talking to a client and building trust. But the truth is I can't fix 100% of my clients necessarily. I can't heal everybody. They have to be part of the process. If they are coming to me and just expecting me to like snap my camera and boom, they're fixed and they don't have any more body issues, that's never going to happen. Um, if they're open and they embrace the experience, it will definitely help. But some people are just not open to it. You know, it's the same thing with therapy, with medication with anything if you you have to be open and willing to do your part of the work also absolutely great advice thank you uh, you have specialized in boudoir yes why <laughs> almost from day one actually um, you know I really didn't know why until about two years ago <laughs> interestingly enough in the beginning I really just thought it was what I love to do it's what makes me happy it's what makes worth leaving my family for and and spending the time doing I didn't know why I loved it though and what I really learned over the last few years is that it's really because I struggle with all of these things that women struggle with too so by healing them and, and helping to heal them it heals me as well so you know I really stop and think next time I look at a picture I go oh I look so fat in that picture I go wait a minute what are you saying you can't say that you know really look at it 
people don't see the things that I see when I look in the mirror when they first see me. You know, when somebody loves you, they're seeing your laughter, they're seeing your personality and your soul and your, um, you know, all your great traits. They don't see your stretch marks and your cellulite and your big nose and, you know, whatever else you might be concerned about. Sure. So when I go through these experiences with these women, it helps remind me in my life that, um, you know, it's it's okay to be imperfect and, in fact, embrace the imperfection. Indeed. So it's it's therapeutic not only for your subjects but also for you, which is absolutely which is awesome. Absolutely. Um, obviously, boudoir has been around for a while. You know, it, it's not a it's not a new thing. Although, in a way, it's come back. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, we've had boudoir photography from the 1920s, uh, and and now it's it's back and and there's just so many boudoir photographers. Yes. How do you, how do you stand out among all those people and do so well? Thank you. Um, good question. The first thing is really hard work. I mean, you cannot let your guard down in this industry. You just have to keep working, working, working. I always say that this is not like, and I build it. If you build it, they will come type of industry. If you build it, they'll come. Maybe they won't come. They'll stop coming. You'll have to readjust your prices, fix your message, whatever. You know, you, sure. it's always working. I think people have this misconception that, um, oh, you're up on stage and you're teaching everybody. So you have it figured out and I can't wait to be like that. But the truth is I only have it figured out today. Mm. Who knows what tomorrow is going to be. Awesome. Um, yeah. So hard work, I would say, is is the first thing, um, really. And that's that's a misconception, I think. People, um, you know, I built a name because I worked hard, because I specialized, because it was the only thing that I did for a long time, and nobody was really doing that at the time. Sure. Um, but I also like to think that I really built this because I care about it so much, and um, it's really the only thing I know. I mean, if it's not this, then what? I don't, I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, it, it's... It, Interesting to, to hear your perspective on this, but it's so nice to hear also that hard work. I mean, really, this doesn't come easy. It's not no. you're picking up the camera and you're making pictures, of, uh, beautiful pictures, obviously, but uh, of, of people, and they're just going to be just enthralled by your work. Uh, you just have to keep working at it. Yeah, and um, you know, there's. So, I don't want to cut you off, but I'm going no. to anyway. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, the crazy thing is, is it's not just, it's we as photographers have so many different levels of work here. You know, it's, we have to figure out how to run businesses, banking and bookkeeping, you know, how many contracts and law things that we have to deal with. We're having to learn our skill and lighting and taking pictures and buying equipment and knowing what's right for us and scouting locations and finding clients and marketing. I mean, this is not like I'm going to open a restaurant and market it and cook good food. This is I need to know 85 different, you know, mm. Different things about right. my business, which I know you you talked about shoot edit. I'm going to give a little plug, which is why I outsource certain things. Yes, I'm not good at everything. Right, you know, right. uh, that's okay too. I want people to understand. I'm not sitting here being good at everything. I outsource certain things like editing and bookkeeping and things that I can't do myself. It's almost like the smartest thing you could do for your business. A hundred percent, because the thing is, I know where my strengths are, right. and I know where they're not. And the thing is, where they're not frustrates me and aggravates me, and that doesn't help my business. You know, um, everything that you do in your business either works towards your goal or against it. So I only do the things that work towards what I want. Sure, excellent, excellent. Again, beautiful advice. Um, let's go back to to boudoir photography for just a second. I I'm always interested in knowing the why behind photographs and. Uh, you sent me a set of images which will appear in the uh, in this blog post below, uh, and they're just just so varied and so beautiful. Um, obviously, they're all women. <laughs> yes. uh, but what motivates women to come to seek you out? What is it that they they're what is it that's going through their minds and going, okay, I want pictures that make me feel sexy, make me feel good. What is it that what what sure. is it that's motivating them? I think the common denominator is really some sort of life change or transition in their life. So that can be getting married, having children, 40th birthday, uh, losing weight, whatever it might be. Just having a hard time, getting out of a bad relationship, or just a woman who is happy and is like, I've worked really hard and I want to celebrate myself. And for me, um, you know, most of my clients do come to me and say, I want to give a gift to my husband or my boyfriend or whatever it might be. Um, but really, they're just using that as an excuse to spend the money on themselves because the experience is really for boudoir photography where it's at. The pictures are just a souvenir. I'm not saying it's not important to take good pictures and that you shouldn't make money on your photos and whatnot, but the pictures are the souvenir of the amazing experience. She can give those pictures to anybody she wants, but she will always hold that experience in her heart. 
Um, so that's really why people seek me out, um, and I've really pushed that message to people. Um, you know, we were joking before that I'm wearing my shamelessly feminine tank top, um, but really, it is about women. For me, it's about women who want to find me and help discover their femininity and celebrate it for its uniqueness. Absolutely, that's awesome. Um, one final question, I think I'm going to ask you is this: uh, Can men be good boudoir photographers? Yes, they can be. However, it does, in my opinion, require a different set of rules. And that is also varies per photographer. Some men can totally get away with being kind of flirty and, um, you know, listen, let's face it. There's people who do boudoir photography for different reasons too, client-wise. I, you know, I just told you my clients come to celebrate their femininity shamelessly, but some people are doing it for to feel very sexy or to have some sort of sexual connotation to it. My clients are not that, but somebody else might. So those women might really enjoy being photographed by a man. You know, if you are a straight woman, it's more natural to be in that state in front of a man than it is a woman. You know, women judge each other. So it's hard sometimes to bear yourself in front of another woman and not think, oh my gosh, is she looking at my cellulite and my stretch marks? You know, we're trying to make sure um, that that doesn't happen, of course, in my studio. But sometimes people are more comfortable in front of a male. So I think some men can get away with sort of being that kind of flirtatious, manly kind of guy. And then some men might go more towards like what I'm doing as far as women really celebrating themselves. And for that, I would be really careful. Maybe have a female assistant, don't touch your clients, don't serve alcohol, things like that. But, you know, every guy is different. And I think yeah. men make amazing boudoir photographers because they – can do what I could never do, and that's see women in the eye of a man. And so I think as long as they realize that and they respect the women that they work with, why couldn't they be good boudoir awesome. photographers? Awesome. Again, solid answer. Thank you. Uh, the Art of Posing is coming up, uh, Posing Women, uh, a webinar that you're giving through shoot.edit. Uh, it's on Wednesday, April 29th. What can we learn from you? Give us a little bit of a teaser. Sure. I think that this webinar is so important for every photographer, not just boudoir photographers. In fact, as important for wedding photographers or anybody shooting women in any scenario like families or even seniors, believe it or not. When you learn posing from a boudoir point of view, we're going to scale it down. We're going to take her clothes off almost you know, to the point of not having anything. And you could really see how the body moves. This is what we're going to go over. We're going to talk about the eight different points from head to toe that we check every single time we click the shutter. And it's not just what we move, but how we move it. It's the how that really people are screwing up on, if I have to be honest. They know what to move. You know, There's that expression, like if it bends, bend it. Right. That's fine, but not every bend yeah. is a good one. You know? <laughs> That's right. Um, That's right. So it's not just what to move, it's how to move it. And it's going to look even better on a woman um, when she has a wedding dress on. In other words, she'll look even better with these posing techniques. You know, I, I used to study fine art drawing. And when I started, we learned how to draw the skeleton. And then we learned how to draw the muscle groups. And it wasn't until we knew the skeleton and the muscle groups that we could draw a woman with skin, basically. And it was so frustrating to me. I hated it. I wanted to draw what I saw. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that you have to understand how posing works from the inside out. And if you don't understand how it works under the clothes, you'll never understand how to make her look good in the clothes. So boudoir, wedding, mom, senior, whatever, this uh, posing webinar will help everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's, you know, I think it's, well, I know it. I know having spoken to you now and, and seen your work and, and clearly you're so passionate about what you do, Jen. Uh, you know, this is going to be an amazing uh, webinar for people to to, work, to sign up for. Uh, it is um, from 10 a.m. to uh, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. If you guys figure out where you are and, uh, and sign on in, uh, there is a registration page. I will link to it and uh, we will see you on the webinar. Jen, thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye.